Aloha and welcome to another edition of 8 Torque Tutorials. I'm going to go over retouching a GoPro Honu image, also a turtle to those who don't know what a Honu is. Honu is Hawaiian for turtle, sea turtle. Anyway, I'm going to grab an image that my friend sent me today. It's right here. I'm going to drag it into the latest version of Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud 2015. It's a subscription-based program, so you guys know. You get Lightroom and Photoshop for $9.99 a month. Totally recommend it. Killer deal. Worth it all day long. You could always stop paying if you don't want it anymore. Anyway, I'm going to hit F to get in the full screen mode. Now I have more real estate. I'm working on a 27-inch iMac, so it's pretty decent. I'm going to hit Command J after that. So I'm using the F key to get in the full frame or full screen mode. I'm going to hit Command J, Control J on a PC, and that's going to duplicate the layer. So I'm going to work on a separate layer now. So it's kind of nice to see before after and have something safe to be working on. I'm going to go into Filter, and I'm going to go into Camera Raw Filter. So what this is doing, it's not necessarily a filter per se, like a warp filter, saran wrap, or anything cheesy. It's actually opening up a very strong dialog box, the same dialog box that you use to open up raw files and process out into Photoshop. So you have stuff to control your white balance, your exposure, contrast, saturation, vibrance. Vibrance is essentially a smart saturation slider, so it's going to adjust and add color to the areas that it thinks is lacking color. So anyway, they're kind of laid out in the way you're intentionally or you're supposed to be using them. So apparently, you know, you don't want to be adjusting your color after you add saturation I mean, before you add saturation, because if you do, you're going to be basically just enhancing a color cast. So anyway, I'm going to undo out of that. Oh, there we go. So right off the bat, I'm looking at this visually, and it looks dark. So again, I have a calibrated monitor. My luminosity on my display is calibrated, so I know it's not super bright. So I know that it is actually dark. And you can see by the histogram, too, things are kind of hovering to the left side of the chart which shows that it's on the darker side of things. So I'm going to take this slider and I'm going to slide it over to the right, kind of get all of this data more towards the center. And, you know, it looks better. Still got work to go, but it looks better. With the GoPro file, I know you can get away with adding more color to it because they really do lack a lot of saturation. So I'm going to go and hit the saturation slider really quick just to kind of see, not too much, plus 27 I'm going to stop there and I'm going to go just to play around because I think this is a really good slider, not necessarily with JPEGs, but with RAW files for sure. There's a new feature called Dehaze. Dehaze does exactly what it does, says. It takes away the haze. It adds contrast to something like a voggy shot or a backlit shot. So you can go and see, you know, it's going to kind of wash it out and then it will kind of pull everything back in a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy. I don't think this is the right application. Again, it's a JPEG that I'm bringing into this, so it's not going to work the exact same way. So say I just go to plus five. Every time you make a move with anything, you kind of have to balance it out. So say I bring in the contrast. I may have to lighten up the shadows a little bit just to add some detail in this area right here. Um, you know, maybe take the exposure up a little bit more. The focus isn't perfect. His head's kind of soft. It's coming more towards the shell. So, you know, it, it's a good file. It's not an amazing file, but still a cool image. Uh, you know, kind of play with different sliders, maybe the white slider a little bit. And again, if you're ever kind of wondering what's going on, you can hit this little highlight warning. And you see this is the only thing, the specular highlight that you call it, that's kind of going, you know, pure white. So it's nothing that's super alarming. I can even go into the effects tab and use the vignette a little bit. You know, maybe just kind of, yeah. A lot of times you'd use a little bit of the darker vignette because your eye just naturally is drawn to the lightest part of the image. So you want your viewer to go to the focal point, which is the turtle, obviously, not towards the, not towards the edges of the frame or anything. So, you know, that can be kind of a cool effect if you want it, but I'm just going to kind of leave it where it was at zero. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with, with a lot of the water shots. 
it lacks red. That's why a lot of people use red filters when they dive. So a way to kind of get this effect in post, I'm going to go into this little tab, at least in the camera raw dialog box. You can do this in Lightroom. You can do it in Photoshop and a curve or a levels. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to the red channel and I'm just going to add a teeny bit. Let me see. Kind of like that. And if you see, it's subtle, but it takes away from everything looking green, which is kind of annoying. There's no separation in the colors of the water and the animal, whatever it may be, shark, whale, dolphin, turtle, person. So adding a little red to me definitely helps. You can even go into the other channels and kind of play a little. You know, let me see. Green channel. Take away green, add green. And what I do a lot of times, I use the Command Z tab. I mean, Command Z tab. The Command Z key shortcut. And that's basically toggling before and after. I'm basically, it's an undo. Command Z is undo in Photoshop and Lightroom and a lot of things. So what you do, it's kind of like a before after, kind of like going to the optometrist at the eye doctor and having them go, what looks better, this or that. Same kind of thing. So look visually what's going on and like, does that look better? A little bluer or a little better warmer? I personally think it looks better warmer. Uh, you know, kind of, I'm just going to play around. Just really quick slam through these things and see. Just to see what's... Uh. But if you see, in just a few minutes, I was able to make an image go from there to there. So essentially it's like, again, I've always used, I've used this a bunch. It's like turning on the lights on your image or your file. I mean, what would you rather have? Would you rather show a client that or this? And again, this is only a few minutes of retouching for an example. It's not even my file, which doesn't really matter, but you can see, you know, that I mean that's pretty dark and raw as far as just kind of lame you can see there's potential and what can be pulled out of the file at least I can and I'm sure others can too but now you can see you know and again there's no sharpening to it I didn't color correct I mean I didn't um clean up the file at all it's kind of hard to do right now with my keyboard and everything the way it is but I can zoom in I can go over here hit J which is my spot healing brush tool, I can go and clean up some of these little artifacts and kind of clean everything up and, you know, work the file, finesse it, make it look that much nicer. And then sharpen it and resize it. So I mean, say here, I go really quickly, just kind of get some of the little ickies out. Now, mind you, I'm using a pressure sensitive stylus with my Wacom tablet. Uh, you know, say like here, I can go, there's a little spot right here. You make the brush a little bit bigger than the dust you're trying to remove or the artifact and just kind of swipe over it. Again, this is a little tricky. I would actually use the clone stamp for this. So I'm going to do that exact thing and you'll see how much nicer it is. Oh, bad opacity. And then I can go and, you know. Again, just kind of hammer through, uh, you know, little stuff like that. I'd be more concerned. I mean, the water is important, too, because all those little specks start to make it annoying, especially if you end up printing it. But, you know, anything distracting on the turtle, to me, you know, like that, if you see, just kind of shows that there's debris in the water. Um, we'll stop there. And then say I want to resize it. Oops, sorry, hit the mic. I'm going to just go to like 1200 or 1300 pixels. And I'm going to, oh, let me see something. I'm going to duplicate the layer again. So I have the original, not sharpened version. And I'm going to go here in the sharpen, unsharp mask. I'm going to use a radius about one and just kind of add. 
And I could even maybe do a little finessing with the curve. Uh, too much black. Let's go into the red channel a teeny bit. Whoa. Telling you the red channel is key in my opinion. I'm going to just again finesse it. And now I could even do something else and go a little bit more beyond. Now I have a mask, so I'm going to go and paint with my brush tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Mind you, I'm on a 5K iMac, so it's sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to work on because everything looks too damn good. So I'm going to go and instead of my vignette, I'm just going to kind of darken the area that I just lighten to keep the lightest area by the turtle. So now if you see, it goes from there with the last tweak to there to the original. So original, camera raw plug-in tweak, and then final tweak for like web or something. Boom. You know, so not bad. I mean, if you go here, boom, boom. So that's it. Again, that's how it should be viewed. That's 100%. But looks pretty good to me. So hope you got something out of it. Again, it's kind of difficult doing this tutorial thing with my tablet and I'm in a natural position, but I think you got the gist. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go check out my Instagram at Honu Whisperer. And my Facebook page is Photography or facebook.com slash atortphotography. Anyway, thank you and aloha.